I kind of feel like a Bob Ross moment here where you're like, and just a little light swoosh. Just so gentle with a flick of the wrist here. <laughs> Lemon lovers, my name is Sasha, and we're back with another episode of Alt Baking Bootcamp with Well and Good. I'm a baker, a trainer, and a nutrition coach in New York City, and today you and I are going to make the most delicious, gut healthy, gluten free lemon chia loaf. What makes this loaf extra special? Well, first of all, it's gluten free, so the combination of flours are already nice and high in fiber and full of the good carbohydrates that are gonna keep you fuller for longer. Um, we're also utilizing chia seeds in place of poppy seeds. The benefits of chia seeds goes on and on and on and you can read all about them on wellandgood.com. But for now, just trust that they are full of fiber and omega-3s and just overall a delicious addition to any baked good. We'll start by combining our wet ingredients um, and that just begins with zesting some lemons. I have a microplane here, I've got a nice deep bowl and I'm going to zest um, three lemons. I've got Meyer lemons and then I've got just a traditional lemon and I really like the fragrance that the Meyer lemons um, lend to the loaf, but this just really gives the true lemon aroma. So I'm doing two and one, you don't have to do that. <laughs> it's not that serious, but it is fun if you like to play around with, uh, you know, just your, your techniques at home. So the last time we did this, we talked about placing your microplane flat along the edges of your bowl and allowing your lemon to move against the microplane as opposed to the microplane against the lemon. Well, see, because things like that will happen. Um, yeah, so let's just get to zesting. Okay, done. We've got our three lemons zested. I'm just gonna get all the excess off of uh, my microplane here. And then you're going to add your sugar right into the zest. We will combine it with our hands until it resembles the texture of wet sand. And then we'll just continue on our journey with the wet ingredients. Once you're done combining the sugar and the zest, you're ready to go in with the rest of your wet ingredients. So I'm gonna follow up with some yogurt. And here I'm using cashew yogurt, which is a fun alternative to dairy, um, just in keeping in line with like this gut healthy, antioxidant filled, and just overall great things for your, your heart and your belly. I like this um, non-dairy alternative and it lends a bit of sweetness to it. We've got oat milk right in. And then we have three eggs, which I've already cracked, also going right in. I love a recipe that just lets me dump everything into one bowl and then mix when I'm ready to. So I'm also gonna add the vanilla. This is the moment that we're going to start to mix and then we'll combine our dry ingredients together. We'll add that to this wet situation and then we'll finally add some olive oil, the chia seeds, and then it's ready to go into your loaf pan. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, that looks great. So I'm just gonna cut my lemons very quickly. We're going to squeeze some juice out of them. You need three tablespoons at home. And I would say the juice of a whole lemon tends to be between like four and five tablespoons. Um, I'm pretty good at eyeballing this, but you should definitely use a measuring spoon at home. Great. We're gonna hold on to the rest of the juice as well because that's what we're gonna make our lemon glaze with. Mm, so good. Very excited. We'll go right in there. I dropped a seed in my bowl, that's why I'm being careful. I don't 
don't want you to bite into that later. Ta-da. So here I've got Bob's Red Mill one-to-one gluten-free baking flour. So they have done all of the tedious work of finding out which ratios of which gluten-free flours work best together. And they've already added the xanthan gum in there. So literally all the work is done for you and you just have to measure it out and put it into your recipe. Um, we're gonna do one fourth a teaspoon of salt. We are using both baking soda and baking powder because you really wanna get that nice, airy, light, fluffy texture that a loaf, um, that a typical loaf would have. So here we are, combine that all, shake off the excess, and then we're gonna slowly start putting the dry ingredients into the wet. Gluten-free flours tend to be very, very absorbent, which is why there's so much liquid in this. You've got lemon juice, you've got milk, you've got eggs, you've got olive oil. And so we're gonna have a really light and airy crumb, but it's also gonna be so moist that you wouldn't even believe that it's gluten-free. Okay, so this is coming together quite nicely. You'll notice that the batter is very, very thick and that's because we still have not added our olive oil. And once that's in there, it's gonna be super smooth and luscious. And those like really bright lemon zest pieces that I was telling you about from the Meyer lemons are like totally shining through like little stars. We love. All right, making sure everything from the bottom is also incorporated. Looks like we're good to go. All right, here we go. Olive oil right in there like swimwear. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go right in with my chia seeds. So fun. Ta-da! Okay. Boop. Chia seeds are so cool. They can absorb nine times their weight. So whenever you get like a chia seed pudding or you put it in your smoothie, like it just becomes like this additional like filler, but in the best way possible. They're just like little powerhouse seeds. Make sure as you're making your batter, you're preheating your oven to 350 degrees and you've also pre-greased whatever loaf pan you plan to bake in. We have decided to go with something very fun, a mini loaf pan. It's not even a pan, it's a mold. We love it, it's very cute. I've sprayed it with some canola oil and I'm just gonna put the batter evenly into each one of these little spots and then we're gonna put it in the oven. The batter is really beautiful. It's like speckled, it's got bright pieces. It's so aromatic and ugh, sweet smelling. I'm very excited for this. Okay, so you don't have to be super precise. I would eyeball it. Ugh, look at that layering, it's so beautiful. Okay, we're done. Voila. We've got our little molds filled and my oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I've got a sheet tray right here to make for easy handling. I'm just gonna pop it onto the sheet tray and then we're gonna put it in the oven for 40 minutes. Check on it in about 20, see what's going on, give it a rotation, and then set another timer for 20 minutes again. Okay, so our mini loaves are in the oven baking away, and now we're just gonna make the glaze while they do that. So I've got powdered sugar and I've got lemon juice, fresh squeezed. And basically what you're going to do is put just under a cup of powdered sugar into a bigger mixing bowl. And then we're gonna start with two tablespoons of lemon juice, and then we're going to whisk and see if we achieve the um, kind of like the thinness that we want in a glaze. And then we will adjust how much uh, liquid we need to add from there. So, one tablespoon. It's gonna look like you need way more juice to make this 
go from a powdered sugar mess to a glaze, but you'll be surprised how much goes, uh, how little goes a long way. Okay, that's it. Look at this. Ta-da. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, so I'm just testing to see whether this is um, cool enough to handle with my bare hands, and it is. We've been waiting about 10 minutes. Um, I just pulled it right out of the oven, let it hang out, let it slowly cool down. So, still warm to the touch, but not too hot. I'm gonna put it on a cooling rack. So let's put it right on top of the sheet tray and that's just to catch any excess glaze. So you didn't have to wait too long to actually glaze them, but you're gonna have to wait at least an hour to cut into them because the crumb is so delicate and moist that if you were to open it while it's still this warm, it would just kind of crumble and like fall apart. And we don't want that after all the work we put into them. So lay on the glaze, maybe take a spoon to satiate your sweet tooth while you wait. And then I'll meet you back here in an hour so we can taste them. Okay, you guys, Whew, what a practice in patience. So we bake them, we glaze them, and now we fully let them cool for about an hour and they're just ready to be eaten up. So I'm gonna just move this. Oh, look at that. Clean slice. I'm getting the best slice there ever was. Oh my God, it's so pretty, look at this. The little lemon zest stars that we were talking about, there they are. A nice even distribution of the chia seeds and they've almost kind of expanded like I told you they would. It's just like a beautiful, an even layer of glaze. Mm. All right, here we go. Mm. It's so bright, it's so moist, it's so soft, it's just, so sophisticated. Like, who orders a lemon loaf? We do. We don't even order it, we make it now. Mm, and then we eat the glaze first. You guys, no one would ever know that this is gluten-free because the crumb and the texture, so moist, so perfect, airy, light, melt in your mouth. Like, all of those things that no one would ever equate to being gluten-free. And we've nailed it right here with this lemon loaf. Oh. So I think I'm gonna be busy for the rest of the evening eating more of this. And in the meantime, I think you should definitely subscribe to Well and Good because if you're into this recipe, we've got loads more for you over there. I'll see you next time.